Nottinghamshire finished off their LV County Championship campaign with a defeat at Trent Bridge against Sussex, a result which means that a third place finish is now the best they can hope for, although Sussex have a better than even chance of ending up there after winning this game by 191 runs. The visitors began the last morning on 244 for three in their second innings for a lead of 222 and they continued to score freely even after Luke Wright drove Luke Fletcher to Gary Keady in the morning's fourth full over. Ed Joyce resumed his innings on 115 made at a runner ball and the inspirational Irishman was soon adding more as Sussex looked to get runs on the board as quickly as possible to set up a declaration and give Nottinghamshire a target to chase on a pitch which was still playing well as Luke Wells was also discovering with some fine shots. Both left-handers were making batting look rather easy. Joyce fell for 149, caught on the boundary's edge by Jake Libby off Keedy, with a total on 320 for five and a lead now standing at 298. Wells had put on 60 runs in 11 overs with his captain and now another 78 came off the next eight. Wells enjoying coming in down the order with this maximum. Next ball and after taking 15 runs off the Keedy over, the usual opener was at a 50 from just 48 balls. That six and nine fours included in that, the lead now for Sussex beyond 300. It was now one day mode for the visitors with both Ben Brown and Wells adding more big shots as Sussex put on 162 runs in 24 and a half overs on the final morning. Nottinghamshire beginning to look like a side whose season could not finish quickly enough. The declaration came shortly after Wells drilled Samit Patel to Fletcher at long off to fall for a 62 ball, 79. When Joyce called them in, Knots were left with a minimum of 75 overs to chase down 385 to win. Libby and Alex Hale saw out three overs before lunch, but the latter was out in the fourth over of the afternoon session. Chris Jordan with a catch at slip off Steve McGoffin. The as always magnificent McGoffin then moved to the top of the wicket-taking charts in the first division by having the first inning centurion Libby held at short leg by Chris Nash. With 62 runs on the board, Michael Lum was acrobatically caught by Jordan off Ashar Zaidi's second ball, the batsman completing a championship summer without a single hundred to his name. James Taylor managed one of those in the first innings of this match, but he could have gone early here. Nash with a juggle before the drop. Taylor and Ricky Vessels then started to bat their side into a good position. Chasing down the target may have already been beyond them, but a draw to end a run of confidence sapping defeats, both in this competition and in the 50 over one, appeared the most likely outcome as this pair added 69 runs in 21 overs either side of T. So Jordan's excellent Yorker came just in time for his team. Vessels on his way for 37 at 131 for four. Jordan was soon in the action again. Taylor on 46, gloving a pull behind to just give Sussex a chance of a win, which would see them jump up to fourth in the table. Patel and Chris Reed saw out eight overs, but then the former's bad end of season run was finished as he nicked McGoffin to Jordan to go for seven. Three balls later, and Reed was also on his way, Zadie possibly producing one of the best deliveries of his career to remove the batsman's off stump. Indeed, few batsmen around the world would have been able to keep this beauty out. McGoffin then took his tally of championship wickets to 67. That's four more than his successful summer last year, as Fletcher was LBW for eight, and now Sussex had plenty of time to grab the final two wickets. Luke Wood, surrounded by fielders, was LBW to Zadie, who was excellent throughout his 20 overs. And in the next one, it was all over. Jordan bowling Harry Gurney with another Yorker, as Nottinghamshire slipped from 131 for three to 193 all out to end their campaign with three successive defeats. After losing to Durham and Yorkshire, they now went down by 191 runs here. McGoffin with eight wickets in the match 
and that meant a haul of seven points to Sussex's 22, which now leaves them just seven behind their hosts here, but with a game at Whipping Boys Northamptonshire to come. If Warwickshire slip up in their final match, Sussex could yet end the season as runners-up after finishing in third 12 months ago.